In this video, we are going to look at the input capture mode of the timer counter available in the LPC microcontroller. This input capture mode, it is used for measuring the time period between two events. So these two events can be two rising edges, a rising edge, a falling edge, a falling edge, a rising edge, or two falling edges. So input capture is very useful at places where you want to measure the time delay between two events. So remember here we are going to use it as a timer. That means the clock used for uh, input capture is one of the internal clocks. It should be synchronous with your processor core clock. So we have previously seen like by uh, setting certain register value you can derive by the processor clock, processor clock by four, by eight, etc. And you can pre-scale also. So all those are applicable here also. Now the input event that is going to come through some pin and that pin is the same capture pin, the capture interface that we use when we used it as a free running counter. But in the previous case, that event was used as a clock signal for your timer counter. But in this case, it is just an event. The clock is internal. Uh, so what is going to happen is you can configure which edges you need to capture. And whenever such an edge happens uh, through the interface, such event happens, the current value in the timer counter is captured by this capture register. So we have an extra register here called the capture register. He'll be taking a snapshot of your timer when this particular event happens. So the timer will be keep on running. Whenever the event happens, the value at that time he will capture and he will also give you an intro so that you can read that value uh, and process whatever you want. So if you want to measure the delay between two events, okay, whenever the first event happens, we'll get an intro. We'll read the value from the capture register and to store it somewhere when the next event happens we will again get an intro we read the value again and if you measure the difference between these two values you will get the number of clock cycles uh, that elapse between these two events from that you can find out the exact time delay between uh, these two events now we have an extra capture register here you can ask like why don't we just read from the timer when the intro happens because the timer is again in a free running mode here and so some event will happen and we will get some interrupt then we will come and read the value from the timer by that time again some time might have elapsed and that means if you read the timer the exact time at which this event happened uh, won't be available that's why we have this extra register so he will just capture it and keep it there so that you can come and easily read it now the steps for programming is half of it from our timer uh, part half of it is from our counter so first of all again you need to enable the timer counter uh, depending upon which one you want to use i am planning to use timer zero so i will skip this step next you have to configure the capture interface here also because the event is coming through the capture interface so you need to configure which pin you want to use i'm using capture zero interface of our timer zero okay so this part we have already done in our counter example uh, by configuring the pcl register how to choose a particular pin then again this part we have already done for our timer example you can configure the pclk value this is the default value cclk by four so i am still going to use the uh, same clock so i can step this one also uh, you can optionally configure the prescale register again optional i don't want to change it i will stick to cclk4 okay so again when you want to configure it uh, that depends upon the time delay between these external units okay if they are happening quite fast maybe you want to sample them uh, faster in that case you can use a high frequency clock cclk or cclk by two uh, otherwise cclk4 is good enough pre-scaling again optionally if the time delay between them is too large the external events if you use a high frequency clock uh, you won't be able to measure the time because your timer might have offload by the time the second event happens in that time maybe you want to run at a lower clock frequency the lowest available here is cclk by eight but if you want to further reduce it you can configure it here again i'm not going to change it by default register value is zero that means you are dividing by one so you'll be running at the pclk itself so here you are choosing timer counter mode Again, as I mentioned, although you are measuring the time delay between external events, this is running as a timer. So choose this default option. Uh, you are going to sample at the rising edge of PCLK. Okay. Now, 
this is the extra register coming here capture control register where you will configure which even you need to capture so you can capture on rising edge you can capture on falling edge so if you set only this bit you will be getting interrupt only when rising edges happen if you set this one you will be getting interrupt only when falling edges happen if you set both of them you will be getting interrupt when uh, either rising edge or falling edge happens okay in in your case if you want to measure the difference between two rising edges only set this one or if you want to measure time between two falling edges uh, set this one if you want to measure the say t on period the rising and falling edge in that case you can set both of them so that in both cases you get an interrupt now only if you set this bit you will be getting interrupt now in our case we haven't seen the interrupt controller uh, so we will not be writing the interrupt service routine so this makes real sense only when you have an interrupt service routine uh, for your timer but we won't have it but still we will set this bit because the reason will be clear when I discuss uh, the next slides this is for capture one we are using only capture zero at this point so use only this one but let me repeat again at any time instance you can use either capture zero interface or capture one interface there is no way to use them simultaneously because you can see in the ctc register you have to choose which interface you are using again this is the case because physically there is only one tc register timer counter register so he can capture only on one interface at a time but at different time instances different scenarios you can use uh, different interfaces okay uh, that is possible now this we have seen uh, of course you have to set this bit one for running the timer so this should be set to one and initially maybe we will reset it and enable it now this is the part uh, which is relevant if you have an interrupt service routine so there we set the interrupt bit so whenever an event happens you will be getting an interrupt but first of all you need to find like what won't cause this interrupt okay uh, that makes sense when you are using different interfaces of the timer counter under different scenarios so you have using capture zero in some cases capture one at some other cases so which interface gave this interrupt you need to find out for that you will have to come and read this register now this is the only way to find out what caused this interrupt okay so unless you set that bit in the interrupt register that means this one the corresponding bits here won't get set so that's why although i'm not writing interrupt service routine i will set that bit and i won't have interrupt service routine instead i'll be keep on reading from this register i'll be in a polling mode i'll keep on reading from this register so that whenever a capture happens this bit will become one and i will find like okay this even has happened okay so that's why even if we are not writing isr i'm setting that bit so that this bit gets set and in polling mode i can find out whether uh, any even happened or not so in our case we are looking only at this bit uh, this is for the other caption interface this we will discuss later for the match case now when you get interrupt okay as we mentioned we have capture register also you have to read from the capture register so there is a dedicated capture register for capture interface zero and capture interface one also when you get an interrupt uh, you are supposed to clear that interrupt there is no separate register for clearing the interrupt you will write one to the bit to acknowledge it as well as clear it so if you have an interrupt in capture interface zero this bit will become one we will write one back there so that it becomes zero and next time when you get an intro you will find out like what exactly caused this one okay so now let's go ahead and start coding so we already have the code for the counter here so i am starting from there itself and we will just modify it let's call it input uh, capture.c so first part as i mentioned you have to configure the capture interface uh, using this pin cell register and you need to choose which counter timer you are using i'm using counter zero i'm using uh, interface zero so the pin cell configuration remains the same i don't have to do anything there then the clock okay we are going to use everything default so i won't touch this one i, I want to pre-scale i won't touch this one i want timer mode so i won't touch this one i'm using interface zero so i don't have to touch this one so i don't have to do anything to ctcr either in this case okay so this one uh, we have to change this time i'm planning to capture on the rising edge so that i get the delay between two rising edges so that we need to configure so if you go to your header file 
this is the capture control register okay timer zero capture control register so this one uh, we need to modify so what we need uh, i need interrupt as well as i need to make this bit one so the lowest bit should be 101 uh, i don't want to touch any other bit so we'll use our normal uh, masking technique so this one and and with 0x 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 there so that lowest three bits became zero okay i don't want to capture falling also so i will forcefully make it zero this one so i will have one zero one here that's why it is eight and we will or it with zero x five so that those two bits get set okay so that step is done after that we can start the timer okay so that we already have some functions so we can reset it first now oh, we already have it here okay reset it and start it this line we don't want this was there to configure it as a counter so we need to remove this one so this let's say like uh, enable interrupt on capture zero interface uh, rising edge so we reset it then we are going to this while loop so again my aim is to measure the time difference between two rising edges if you had an interrupt service routine your program will be only this much uh, that means whenever interrupt happens it will automatically go to the interrupt service routine and everything happens there since we don't have an isr what i'll do is i'll be in the polling mode so i'll remain in this while loop and i will be keep on reading uh, this register to find out whether this bit got set or not okay so that's what again we are going to call as polling mode so i will again have another while loop where i will be keep on reading it so which bit is that one that is zero one two three four we want to check whether fourth bit is one or not you should not be checking any other bit so interrupt register is uh this one time of zero intro register so what we'll do is uh, we need to capture only that bit for that we can add it with one zero that means only that bit is uh, captured everything else becomes zero and we can right shift it by four bit position so that we get it as the rightmost bit in a 32 bit number so we want to check whether it is one only if it is one we will read the value from the capture register otherwise we will be stuck here forever so you can either write this equal to zero you stay there or as shortcut you can just write not of this one that means as long as it is zero you are stuck in this one loop Okay. Once it is done, you will come out of the while loop. Uh, at that time, the value in the capture register you can read. Okay. That will tell you when the interrupt happened, what was the value in the timer that is captured by the capture register. You can read from that. Again, capture register 0 we are using. Here you will see like four capture registers are there. On the LPC 2378, it has only two capture interfaces because this is a common header file for all chips of lpc okay so some of them might be having more than one capture interface the one we are discussing lpc 2378 he has only two so we are going to use only zero this time so i will take the value from that and store it in some variable so that later i can use it to find the time difference okay so let's create some variable let's say like in okay first time so this is like when first time the interrupt happened so i am storing it there after this yeah you need to clear that interrupt so that next time an interrupt comes you can find like an interrupt has occurred so you need to write one to the fourth bit here so easy thing if you can just or it with uh, zero x four zero that will clear that interrupt bit then again you are waiting for the next interrupt same thing an interrupt happens you will come out of that so let's store it in a different variable let's say second time or something then again we clear the interrupt now we can find the time difference or basically number of clock cycles between these two units so let's say like second time minus uh, first time so we need to store it somewhere let's say elapsed time 
with this one let's go ahead and declare all of them first time second time and last time and as usual i want to display this using some LEDs connected to port 0. We have already configured the direction. So we can simply say IO pin 0 is this elapsed time. And we remain in this outer while loop. So this is an infinite loop again. So we are always waiting for first interrupt, we get the value, store it somewhere, wait for the second interrupt, get the value, uh, store it somewhere find the difference between them, show it on the LED since you have only LED. If you have LCD, you can send it there, whatever you like, then remain with the loop. Now let me remove this from my source group. And let's add our new file, which is input capture or cap. Okay, yeah, here we have three, here we actually missed one. So it should be okay like this. This we add with this one, then right shift by four, then this one. Okay, so here also. Okay, no, looks fine. Compile. Okay, all well, looks good. Let's go to debug. Okay, we already have timer zero here, we have GPA zero here, this one here, everything same as previous one. So maybe let's try to run step by step this time, first time. Okay, so pin cell reset. Okay, now you can see he resetted, he enabled. Okay, we cleared the reset. Now we went to the while loop. And now he is stuck in this while loop forever. You can see the timer is keep on running. And he is stuck there until the first event happens. So under capture channel, you can see we have configured it for rising edge. We have configured for intra. And we have enabled capture 0.0. .0. So that event is supposed to happen on P1.26, so 4, 5, 6, okay. This is falling edge, nothing happens. Now this is rising edge, okay. So you can see immediately what happened. He stopped, timer counter, but uh, that stopped because my program uh, stepping has resumed, so he will continue. But the interesting thing is whatever is the value when this event happened, that got copied to the CR0 register. You can see this is like two less than this one. Okay. So the timer, he will keep on running if I press next again, but he has taken a snapshot of the value when the interrupt happened and it has copied there. And you can also see the interrupt uh, got checked here. This is the interrupt register content. You can see fourth bit got set. So we are going further. So the value in CR0, we copied it to the first time variable here. So it went somewhere in the memory. Uh, so again, we cleared it. You can see the bit got cleared here in the interrupt register. And now we are stuck in this one. Okay, so we'll be stuck there until next even happen. 26, okay, low, nothing happens, high. Yes, it happened again. And the value when the interrupt happened, from TC, it again got copied here. Okay, let's go further. We cleared it. We calculated the elapsed time. This is the elapsed time. And that came to our GP0 interface. So this will give you the number of clock cycles. So if you know the frequency, of course you know the frequency, you can multiply here in the program itself. Uh, that will be a fractional number, floating point number. If you wish the integer part of that, you can actually send it to this interface if it is like uh, less than 32 bit. Okay. That also can be done. Okay, so let me just run in continuous mode now to quickly show you what happened 24, 25, 26. So first rising, nothing happened. 
second rising you can see the values here change because this is the new time elapsed between the two units so if i keep on pressing you can see it changes if my delay is too much okay first rising second rising this time you can see the value is much larger okay so depending upon the delay between the even value that you see here will also change okay so what you can do is now you can try for different timers i am always using zero you can try for different caption interfaces you can try it for different pclk we already have the function uh, to change the value of pclk and you can also try for different prescaling values and you can find out how this uh, output value keeps on changing so if you increase the frequency this will also become larger and larger if you decrease the frequency yeah this will also become smaller okay thank you